Hello and welcome, my name is Thomas. And in this video, we're gonna be walking through how to set up a basic webinar using OBS. Okay, so you might notice if you're a regular viewer of this channel, a little bit of a change of scenery. I'm not in my typical kind of studio setup right now. I'm actually just in my office. And the reason is because I have in my office when I'm usually doing my work, I've got a dual monitor set up. So two monitors side by side that connect to my MacBook Pro. And the reason is because I'm actually going to be using some software today called OBS. And it's typically gonna work best if you have two monitors. You don't have to. I'll be talking a little bit later on about how you can kind of work around not having two monitors. Um, but typically you want two monitors when you're using OBS. So one of the challenges that a lot of people have is doing webinars. Webinars are an excellent way to be able to generate income for your business, as well as to live interact with your audience. You can answer questions, you can do seminars, you can do coaching. There's so many different possibilities with webinars and that's why they continue to be used over and over again. Now the challenge that most people have with webinars, however, is figuring out what software to use. So, so many people out there go out and buy like GoToWebinar or, you know, Zoom or all these other services, which most of them work pretty well. But the challenge for a lot of people is at least starting out is the price. So most webinar software out there is typically going to cost at least a thousand dollars a year. Uh, OBS, on the other hand, is completely free. And I might add, it is actually much more powerful in terms of what you can do with it than literally any other webinar platform on the planet. So you might be wondering, okay, so why then isn't uh, pretty much everyone using OBS? And the reason is because it's powerful software, but it takes a little bit of a learning curve to get up and running with. It is pretty complicated if you're not aware with some of the features and fundamentals built into it. So the goal of this first video, which by the way, is one in a three part series, this will be three videos that I'm going to be coming out with. So make sure you subscribe if you're not already. But in this first video, we're just going to walk through how to create a really basic webinar setup so that you can get familiar with some of the fundamentals of OBS. One of the other powerful features about OBS that goes far beyond any other live broadcasting webinar software out there is that you can broadcast live to a number of different platforms. You can live broadcast to Facebook through OBS. You can live broadcast to Vimeo, to YouTube, to Twitch, to all these other third party services. You can connect and, and live stream directly to them through OBS. Okay, so without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at how to get set up with some of the basics of OBS. And before we do that, if you'd like to download OBS, I will be leaving a link below this video where you can download the software and start to experiment with it for yourself. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so here we are with a basic setup of OBS. Uh, if, you down, if you're downloading OBS for the first time, it may look a little bit different than what we're looking at here. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna jump on over here to settings just to make sure we have some of these settings correct. So most of the things you're gonna keep pretty much the same. There's just a few small ones that I wanted to address as we're going through. One of the things you'll notice here is the streaming service. You can actually pick from a number of different streaming services uh, in terms of where you actually want this live broadcast to go along with where to actually uh, what information you're actually going to provide to actually connect to that particular stream. But the first thing we want to do is pop on over to video and you just want to make sure that it is set to 1920 by 1080. This is going to be 1080p, which is going to be the highest resolution for most streaming platforms. One of the things I will warn you about just really quickly is that uh, 720p is the absolute max for something like Facebook. So you won't be able, you can stream at this high of a resolution. However, you'll just have to be aware that something like Facebook isn't going to actually be able to get up to that resolution, at least at the time of this video. They're only going to be able to get up to a maximum of 720p. So you want to make sure that you have the resolution set to that if you want to save bandwidth. The other thing I typically do here is like a lot of gamers use OBS to live stream their gaming. Obviously, we're not going to be doing any gaming. So I typically, which uh, they're going to want something high like 60 FPS. 
Uh, but since we're just going to be doing a webinar, 24 frames per second is actually going to be the same frame frame rate as something like film. Uh, so, and plus the lower frame frame rate you select, the uh, better you, your upload is going to be. Spe specifically, if you don't have really fast internet, a lower, slower uh, frames per second will actually help you save on bandwidth. So I typically change that to 24 frames per second. There's a number of other really advanced features in here. Most of these you're not really going to have to worry about, but you are just want to make sure that you're going to be at the right resolution, which is what I typically recommend uh, at 1080p, which again is going to be that 1920 by 1080. Once you change that, you'll see that the shape of your canvas as it's known, the kind of screen area is going to look something like this. Okay, now the next two pieces we're going to take a look at in terms of OBS is you've got something called scenes and then you've got something called sources. You can think of scenes just as you would in a movie. If you're going to change scenes, you're going to have a whole new collection of sources. Now sources can be a wide variety of things from your webcam to your desktop and we'll be going through that here shortly. The mixer is just going to be any audio input and some of these things in here aren't really going to apply to this particular video. Okay, so let's go ahead and now that we've got kind of familiar with some of the basics of the interface, let's go ahead and just start building what could be kind of a mock webinar setup because I think that's going to be the best way to actually start learning the process. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this scene right here to starting. And this is what people are going to see when we are actually starting our live broadcast because we don't want to just go live and show our webcam. We want to give people a time to actually, you know, find their digital seats, so to speak, so that they can kind of file in and that sort of thing. So the first thing we want to do is we create that scene, which is going to be a container of things. And in this case, it's just going to be one thing and it is going to be an image. So we're going to go ahead and say starting uh, image. We're going to click OK. And we're going to browse our computer for an image. So in this case, I have actually already created an image. So I'm just going to go ahead and upload. And you can create this in something like Canva. You just want to make sure that it's the same resolution as whatever you are, uh, your actual canvas or video size is. Then you're going to notice here a couple of little options that show up next to it. You can click the eye if you want to hide it or if you want to lock it so it can't be moved around, then just click the lock. So as you can see, I can actually move this around if it is not locked. And there you go. So that's pretty basic. That's pretty simple. We've already created a single scene. So this is what's going to show up once we go live. So let's go ahead and create another scene here. And let's go ahead and create one specifically for our webcam. So let's go ahead and jump on over to video capture device. Create new, click OK. I guess I'm already, oh, I see. We'll just call this webcam two. I think I've got that name used in another project or something like that. So then what you're going to see here is this nice device drop down. So if you've got a webcam installed, you can just click on that. Hello everyone, you can see me now through my webcam. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and click OK. Then you'll see here it's going to be just like the image. And now what I can do is I can actually go through here and I can resize it. And so there you go. You see that now up and running. Now you'll see over here as well, one of the things that I can do is I can actually click on this to switch between scenes. So if I click on that, you'll see this. And then if I jump back over here, you'll see me on the webcam. Okay, so I can click that lock button and as you can see, I can no longer move this around. Now, one of the things that would not be broadcasting right now, however, is my voice. The only reason you can hear me is because it's post-production and I'm talking through the microphone. So what we're going to need to do to get this to work properly is we're going to now need to add my microphone so that once I start talking, then we'll be able to see that uh, displayed on the screen as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump up to audio input capture. Okay, once we've done that, we just want to change the name to our microphone and we're going to click OK. That's then going to give us a nice little drop down where you can select from all of our input devices. So again, if you're any type of microphone that you're using, if you're using a fancy one like mine, or if you're just using something even like a, a USB headset or something, you can select that here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and select. There we go. Now what you'll see here is that you're going to have just like another item uh, here, you're going to have mic listed and you're going to see over here on the right, 
a nice little audio mixer so that's going to start to show our audio levels so this is what's actually going to be output to the stream from an audio perspective so i can mute this i can also turn it down so if you're a little bit too loud for your audience or something like that you can easily change that here okay then what we're also going to want to be able to do is let's say you also want to be able to talk to your audience while you're on the starting screen what you can do is you can pop on down here hit plus audio input capture and then you can see you can actually select something that's already existing in this case it's the mic and then you can see here that you can go ahead and add that in so what you could do is is mute it you could actually start streaming and go through the process of streaming and then say you're like getting ready to start you could then unmute this say to the people watching hey i'm here we're going to be getting started here shortly thanks so much for joining us and then you can mute your microphone so that people can no longer hear any background noise so again really easy way to set up both pieces and you can see that's pretty easy to get up and running okay so now we've got a starting screen we've got a webinar or the webcam view and again, you're not limited to what I'm doing here. You can create unlimited scenes. Okay, but now let's say we wanted to show the audience my desktop, right? So I wanted to go ahead and create a, another scene here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and say this is gonna be my desktop. Let's go ahead and add then in here a nice display capture. If you're using two monitors, this is where you're gonna wanna pick which monitor that you're using. Zero is going to be the, the default monitor. One is going to be the secondary. And we're going to put under crop. We're going to put none. We're going to click OK. And then we're going to be able to go up here and actually resize this to fit the size of the actual video window or the canvas. Let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. Then we can jump back over here and click lock. So then you'll be able to see here my nice little mouse cursor, just as though it is my full desktop view. Then from there, let's say we also wanna go ahead and add back in our webcam. So I'll go ahead and select add existing. Since we've already set that up, webcam. There we go. Click okay, and then here I am, hello. And let's say we want that to show up maybe a little bit smaller here in the corner so that you can kind of see me as I'm broadcasting. We'll go ahead and lock that down. And then there you go. When I'm over here, you'll be able to see my whole desktop so I can display any number of apps or demonstrations or things that I wanted to do. For example, one of the things that you could do is you could pop open something uh, like keynote and you could start your slide presentations you could go full screen with this you could hide the sidebar and you could go through and start doing a nice normal slide presentation but then let's say that you didn't necessarily want to have your uh your webcam showing while you are doing your keynote presentation so here's something you could do just pop over here click duplicate let's say desktop no cam then all you have to do is delete the webcam out of that particular view. And then there you go. You can just pop between each of these. You can see, hello everyone, here I am. And then you could go to the desktop view and then you could click on down to the no cam view if you wanted people to be able to focus just on this broadcast. Okay, so being able to record uh, a desktop is great, but what about the whole idea of being able to screen record or uh, broadcast a particular window. So maybe there's some software or maybe you just want to be able to do something uh, in your web browser. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the desktop view and we are going to duplicate it. And this time we're going to call it browser. Go ahead and we'll keep that. Uh, actually, we'll go ahead and pop this one above the desktop. And then for our desktop view, we're going to go ahead and we're going to double click it so that we can edit it. We're going to keep it the same here, except for we're going to change crop to window. Then what we're going to be able to do is actually pick a uh, browser window, which I should probably open one. So I'll go ahead and open up a quick browser window and stick it on over on this uh, particular screen. There we go. So now I should be able to find under Safari, I think. Let's see. You know what I need to, since I just opened up the window, I think I need to close this out. So I've opened up the window. So now first we'll reopen this, go down to crop, go to window, 
There we go. Safari favorites. And sometimes you have to change this, like just to, for whatever reason, sometimes it doesn't stick, but there we go. So now we'll go ahead and click OK. And as you can see here, we've cropped it just to that particular window. And keep in mind, you can do this to literally any window. So we're going to pop this uh, to be nice and resized. And then we'll go ahead and close it. And then what you can see is I can go on over here and I can even, right now you can't really see it that well, but I'm actually moving this around and it's staying cropped to that particular window. So then I can jump on over to a nice web browser. And there you go. You've got a nice view of your web browser. So to pop back over to OBS, you can see here that I can jump from scene to scene really easily. I can go to just my webcam. Hello, everyone. Then I can jump on over to just this browser view, and then I can jump on over to my desktop view. Now, one of the things you'll see here is that I actually went through and I accidentally cropped uh, the desktop view. So what I should have done beforehand is actually duplicate the this piece before doing that. It's not a big deal. You can actually change that pretty easily. So what I'm going to do, so we're at browser. I'm going to go ahead and rename this. to browser view, go over to desktop, duplicate, which I don't think I can actually duplicate. Let's see, looking through here, can't duplicate it. That's okay. So what we're going to do is we'll just go ahead and re-add it pretty easily. We can just go to display capture, call this one desktop view, hit OK, and there we go. So pretty easy. Then we just make sure we drag that below the, the webcam and then lock it, and then there we go. And then we can do the same here pretty easily. Okay, so to kind of recap, as you can see, we can go ahead and see our nice starting soon view. Then we can jump on over to our webcam view, and then we can jump on over to a browser and a desktop and then no camera desktop as well. So let's go ahead and add in one more that I like to add in, and that is a nice little ending screen. Because it's a good idea to be able to leave a little bit of a tail end on your broadcast so you have time to wrap things up to make sure that you're, there's a nice little buffer of time at the end of your broadcast so that you can trim it down for a replay and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this ending image. And again, if you're using something like Canva or Photoshop or uh, uh, or Pixelmator or something like that, you can do this pretty easily. So I've just created a nice little uh, ending image. We'll go ahead and select that. Click OK. Click OK. Go ahead and lock that. And there we go. So we've got this nice little webinar ending. So really basic, really simple. As you can see, you can just go ahead and click through each of these. So just throughout your broadcast, you'll be able to switch to these different scenes. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to take a look at, kind of the last piece to the puzzle, is actually going live, right? So the first thing that we want to make sure that we've done is we've gone to settings, and then we go to our output, or I'm sorry, to our stream. And this is where you're going to want to make sure that you go through. Each one's going to be different. So what I'm going to highly recommend that you do is for whichever one you're going to stream to, you just go through the instructions, whether if it's going to be YouTube, they've got a... Uh, live streaming dashboard, same thing goes for something like Facebook, but it's really simple. All you got to do, like for example, if you're going to stream to something like Facebook Live, is you can just keep this as default, and you're going to be able to, on the live view for Facebook, just go and copy and paste the stream key, click OK, and then you're set up. Same thing goes for something like YouTube, you can just copy and paste the stream key that they give you on your live account page, and then click OK. Once you've uh, set up your account, what I'm going to highly recommend is you do at least one test stream. So you want to make sure that you go through the process of going live to make sure that this is all going to work properly. Then once you're ready, all you got to do is just click on start streaming and it's going to start the process of stream streaming to that particular place. Another thing that you can do is instead of streaming live, you can actually click start recording. So that if you want to record this as a video file to your computer, you can do that as well. So if you wanted to do something that isn't live and you wanted to be able to do it just as a video, you could do that. Another thing that you can do as well, if we go on over to settings, is that you can also, let's see here, check this box right here. This is automatically record when streaming so that if you want a video backup saved to your computer as you're streaming, 
uh, or of what you're streaming, you can check this box. Just know that this is gonna basically do double recording. So it's it's streaming at the same time it's recording. So if you don't have a really fast computer, that can be pretty taxing on your computer. So you just wanna make sure that that's gonna work properly for you as you are streaming. Another thing to take note of down here is this is gonna tell you how long you've been live for. This is gonna tell you how long you've been recording for. And this is gonna tell you how much of your CPU you're utilizing as you're going live. So if you're seeing that get up to like 90%, you know that you're taxing your computer pretty hard. So you just wanna be aware of that. And then this is the number of frames per second. 23.98 is going to essentially be 24 frames per second, which is what our preset was. But if you see that dipping down to like 10 FPS or something like that, you know that you're essentially uploading choppy footage to your streams. So you wanna be aware of that. There's a number of reasons why that could be. If you see that, one of it could be that your computer is just having a hard time keeping up. It could also be your upload speed. So if your comp your internet speed isn't particularly fast, it may not be able to put a full number of FPS up to the stream. So there's just things to be aware of, but that's it. Those are all the steps that you need for a basic webinar and how to set it up with complete with scenes and everything in between. Okay, so I know we covered a lot in this video and these were just the basics. So what I would highly recommend is, is, that, is that you download OBS, set up something that you think is going to work for you, and then just kind of test and experiment with it. Now in the next video, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take what we've talked about in this video and use it as kind of a foundation to create something even better. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna incorporate things like scene transitions and animations and videos and things to just take it to the next level. What we've looked at up to this point is gonna be about the equivalent of what most webinars look like, but I kind of have the opinion that people have the ability to create things that are way more interactive and interesting to look at all within OBS and all that it enables you to do. Now, as you may have noticed, I'm working within a Mac. So most of the things that I've been covering up to this point are specific to that, to a Mac. However, OBS is available on Windows and I think it's even available on Linux. Just know that it's not gonna look the exact same as what I'm doing since I am working on a Mac. So as always, if you found this video useful, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and I look forward to seeing you in video two of this video series.